Welcome, Wargamers, to the sprawling fields of Elpis as we continue our discussion on the legacy of Atmos lore. And today we have a doozy as we are talking about the Soul Star God Athel. And if you like this video and you want to learn more about the game and get really involved with playtesting and this development, check out the links in the description down below. They'll bring you right to our Discord. I'm one of three founders of the game and we would love to have you be a part of it. We've got things like painting contests, lore contests, um, TTS tournaments until we can meet again in life and all that stuff. So go ahead and check that out down below. Now to cover the magnitude of a character like Athel, who is essentially the deity of the setting, or at least one of them, we're going to break this down into a who, what, when, why, how situation. As we explore a character that is kind of, kind of beyond our comprehension. One thing I've mentioned before when it comes to Legacy of Atmos is it really is meant to be a steampunk mixed with cosmic horror type of a setting. So kind of keep that. We're going to be talking about beings of incomprehensible size and magnitude and all that. Well, Athel is a soul star god. Soul stars are the offspring of one or more Eldian titans and are beings of pure ethereal energy. So he doesn't have a physical form. Athel was made by Vera, an Eldian of preservation, and Lotimar, the Eldian of honor, over 300,000 years ago from the current timeline. In comparison to other soul stars, uh, Athel is still rather young. He was not born during the War of Creation, but has been mentored by those who were. And he's fought against the Eldians of Ruination many, many times. Now, Viria and Lodomar made Athel for a singular purpose. Okay, the soul star gods are essentially like upper management for Eldians, who are like the true, true gods of the setting. And this purpose was to help preserve the Prosperity Titan's ability to create new life and beings. As within this setting, you need at least two gods or titans to create physical life. Like in the sense of, you know, what we would call life. Not ethereal, nothing like that. You have to bind things together. It takes the effort of many. So Athel, with aid from the Eldian gods Viria and Lodomar, has been tasked with creating and preserving a whole new type of creation. Their task is a grand experiment kept in secret and hidden from the Ruination Titans. Essentially, they are out there to create children who, through a great deal of time and evolution, are theoretically able to ascend to the power of Eldian Titans. It's never been done before, it's never been tried. This is a long game experiment to see what if we allowed life to, you know, if we kind of nurtured it in a certain direction and allowed basic life that we've created to ascend into another plane of existence. This would be like the equivalent of, of humans finding out a way to, you know, shed our mortal coils and exist in a energy sense. It's some lofty stuff. So Athel, Viria, and Lodmar use their vast powers and knowledge to create all life on the planet Elpis, where we are located, with hopes that their offspring will help reignite the second war of creation. The good guys, the guys of preservation, totally lost. Eldians of Ruination are in kind of control, and so this is sort of a secret side project. Well, Viria and Lodimar left right after the first seeds of life were planted to continue their work in other places, while Athel was left to watch and protect Elpis. Which makes sense. You have the two, the higher-ups, right, come to an area, they form the planet, and they leave Athel in charge to go do the same thing somewhere else. Again, we're playing a numbers game. We're trying to seed multiple planets with life to see if any of them can achieve this ascendancy to the next level and help us fight the powers of ruination. Elpis is the first planet to undergo the grand experiment with Athel as its god, its ruler and father. And so he would kind of go across the surface of Elpis, he would start springing forth new life. Again, we've discussed the planet itself as sort of like an incubator of life. They use geological formations like mountains and forests and waterways and oceans to separate the various races that live on Elpis into these little self-contained bubbles. Again, it's an experiment. They have to have consistency. You can't have them cross-contaminating each other. And the Telus Commune, what we know as being the children of Athel, they revere him as the sole deity, they are in charge of monitoring and kind of coordinating this grand experiment. Athel created them to be like the shepherds and the keepers, and I guess we would call it the equivalent of like scientists for it. And he would periodically leave and come back just to make sure that, uh, you know, experiments in other places were going well. Well, around 250 years ago, from the current timeline, Athel was forced to leave the solar system where Elpis is located. 
he hadn't heard from, you know, Viria, Lotmar, or any of the prosperity Eldians that existed for some time. And so basically communication was cut off. His trip was only meant to be like a few hundred years. And in his absence, he left the seven daughters of Athol and the Telus commune in charge of Elpis. He also seeded it with great wells of power, which are the seven soul trees and all the Crealis and stuff like that that we use for spells and magic and things. From time to time, like every couple of decades, uh, he would call through the void and or the soul trees and just kind of keep in contact with the seven daughters of Athol and the various Karath tribes. However, Athol's been quiet for the last 60 years or so. Now, this is important because, as we mentioned in the timeline of, of events here in Legacy of Atmos, um, humanity was one of these experimental races. They started to grow and adapt and expand. And then all of a sudden, the Telus Commune comes in and says, wait a minute, these guys are getting way out of hand. We need to reel this in a bit. And they attack. Okay, this is the first Telnar War. But they are rebuffed because they did not understand how advanced and how powerful humanity had gotten with our machines and our constructs and guns and warriors and all these kinds of things. We're quite an industrious people. And they were pushed back. And it's Athel's silence that leads them to form a very temporary peace agreement up until the current moment. This is all like 25, 30 years ago, something like that. Well, we're at now now. And things are at a boiling point all over again. But the thing is, is that they are just meant to maintain this grand experiment on Elpis. They're not like decision makers. So they keep constantly calling out like, Athel, what do you want us to do? Like, what do we, do we wipe them out? Do we, you know, is this, is this working? Like all of a sudden, are we the baddies? What's going on? And he's just silent. And so it's just this very precarious position that he's put his servants in. Because of this, like the Telus commune is starting to fracture just a bit. And then they're not fully frayed. They're not like still destroyed. They're still the dominant force on Elpis. But as these experiments become more, well, shall we say rowdy, they're losing control slowly and surely. And very importantly, it opens up windows for other forces unseen that will be introduced later to slip in. Now that's all happening, but that is, is wrong to say that every single character in the setting understands that. The humans have no concept of Athel. They only know it as like, oh, it's the deity of the tree people, right? Yeah, whatever. They don't understand the full certainty of their situation. The Seven Daughters and Kareth Chieftains, and maybe the founding Maxadons, which we'll get to in another video, will probably be the only entities that know he is gone. Which makes the Telus situation even more tense because they have to put on the airs of being, you know, a colossal global power, but it's kind of falling apart in the back end. And there's even division amongst the Kareth tribes and the Seven Daughters about how do we proceed. Now, a common thought is that he left to go, you know, start the same thing on another planet, which might be, but it doesn't account for like the sudden drop in power that happened on Elpis and why all of their experiments, meaning humans and Maxodons and that kind of stuff, are suddenly just bursting forth with power. And when you put the, the tree folk, like the saplings and the Athelgard and all this kinds of stuff, uh, along with the Kareth tribes, they easily outnumber any other race on the planet. Okay, they just, they have that power. Again, these are the keepers of the experiment, but as things are falling apart in Athel's uh, absence, they really start to lose that numerical advantage because now they're having trouble communicating here and there. Now they can't coordinate forces. They can't get the Kareth tribes to support the tree folks in a way that they need. There's internal tension and uh, debate and argument which never existed before because Athel would just come down and squash it. And so I kind of want to bring this video to a close by talking about why I think this is so cool. The truth is I love cosmic horror, okay? And I, I love this because we're looking at this from a bunch of different angles, but none of them are Athel's angle, his perspective. And so what I mean by that is you have the humans who are like, oh yeah, that's just the, the tree god that they worship. I'm sure they, you know, it's just some mysticism junk or whatever. And they're very dismissive of it. For the Telus Commune, it is their deity, like that they have personally, some of them interacted with regularly before, but now he's silent. And so there's this idea of like abandonment and like emptiness and all of a sudden now your well of power is, it's starting to hit, you know, halfway, the tank is getting empty kind of a thing is what I'm saying. But we simply don't know or cannot comprehend Athel's, you know, reasoning. Did he see something that was just like, well, Elpis sucks and then just left to go restart somewhere else. Did he find Viria and Lotmir and then they just gave him a different job and so he just like Elpis is just whatever. They don't know. His plans are so much bigger than 
the characters that you and I can interact with can comprehend, but all we know is he's gone. And in a universe that is as uncaring and unflinching as this one, that's a big problem. Now, as we mentioned before, the soul trees do kind of act as like a, an, an array to kind of keep the planet hidden. So it's not like they're in imminent danger, but the minute that one of those experiments, quote unquote, meaning humanity or, you know, the Maxodons or any of the other races that exist on Elpis, once they truly break loose and are in control, we're going to have a Jurassic Park situation, right? Where like no amount of communications array is going to keep you, you know, kind of hidden. We need Athol back. Certainly the Telus Commune thinks that they do because they don't have a whole lot of self, uh, I guess, determination. The Kareth tribes have a lot of ambition. They want to fight. That's their job. But when it comes to the tree folk, like they are still waiting for an answer and they have done things like create peace agreements and armistices and that kind of stuff to just kind of keep kicking the can forward until Athel talks to them yet again. Now we're going to be exploring the Eldian Titans, the, the rank above Athel in a bit here, so you can kind of get a sense. But he really is sort of a, a, a servant slash creator god that fits right in the middle, and I find it very interesting. But anyway, friends, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about Athel and how the setting is going and kind of the cosmic horror nature of it all. I'd love to read it and uh, answer as much as I can. So thank you so much for watching, listening, and I'll catch you in my next Legacy of Atmos video. Happy Wargaming.